Hello there and welcome to www.henrythejedi.com <laughs> You will believe Welcome guys to this uh, special tutorial that I've made that I should have uploaded I think at least a week earlier uh, This of course regards the celebration of our 2 years anniversary here at henrythejedi.com and I'm using this opportunity that to create a tutorial that celebrates of course that particular day in which we turned 2 years old <laughs> First things first, allow me to use this opportunity to once more thank you guys for all your comments that you've left at the site. No wonder I didn't have the chance to, to reply to your comments yet. Because I've been too caught up fly fishing, you know? You know what is fly fishing? Uh-huh. It's the it's the kind of fishing where you put a fly to a to a fishing hook and then you try to fish the fish out of the sea. <laughs> I'm just kidding guys, I'm just kidding. In fact, I had been too busy caught up replying to your emails. That's right, uh-huh. You guys sent me too many good messages that I just wanted to take my time to respond to each one of you with all the best uh, the best comments that I could reply back. And I might say once more, thank you so much for all your comments, you know. Thank you so much for wishing us happy birthday. After all, this is your website and what you do to which you know is really good, okay? So thank you so much for all your comments. By the way, I made a little video in which I thank you personally. You can access that video by going to the products page of the Digitally Transformed DVD. Uh -huh. You are going to see there's a video there. And the Digitally Transformed features, you are going to see me there thanking you personally in a video format. Okay. So I thought to myself, well, as my little sisters will tell me, it's not every day that you turn two years older. That's why I'm, I've created this little animation here in which you are going to, to thank God, to thank you for having, to, having helped us along all this incredible journey of creativity. Okay. In other words, here is a little video tutorial I prepared for you guys. Little? I don't know, because it's quite a lengthy one, because it involves so much creative elements behind it. So here is the amazing video tutorial that I've created for you today. <laughs> so interesting that I decided well let me make a one which will involve an animation in which we turn instead eight years old and this is what I ended up with <laughs> creative techniques as you can see ladies and gentlemen uh-huh this involves quite a lot of creativity and of course I'm going to show you exactly how to create this entire animation using the power of Autodesk 3D Max and After Effects. If you do not have 3D Max, well, don't worry because as part of the project files, I'm providing you guys also with the files that you need, such as these strokes here. Mm -hmm. Of course, I'm going to show you how to design the strokes in 3D Max and I've also provided the strokes as part of the project files so that we can easily load into your project to get, to get started with it. Really, I'm so happy with this tutorial, guys, because this really brings me back to the days when we are used to, here at HenryTheJedi.com, in, in true Henry the Jedi tradition, we create beautiful animations using very, very simple techniques behind the scenes. Of course, you are going to see for yourselves. By the way, talking of beautiful, <laughs> I went on the internet the other day and I saw this. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, what you're looking at is truly phenomenal beauty. I mean, classical beauty. What you're looking at is what 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 is called the Seb ninety two thousand and one. <laughs> it's the first car ever to be tested in a wind tunnel, uh, being being designed by the Seb, by the Seb company. And my God, we'll just look at it. Eh? Just look at the the wheelbase there. You know, I like this side here, which look like. Um, Cheeks, you know, cheeks on a person's face. <laughs> wow, I mean, look at the past and look at the future. And of course, you can see for ourselves the past looks so much better. Look at that, eh? <laughs> I just love these little silly things, you know. <laughs> and this car, when it came out in the 1940s, it only featured, guess what, just a mere 20 horsepower, you know. I bet the top speed was one kilometer per, per day, you know, not even per hour. <laughs> Look at that, eh? Uh -huh. You see how the engineers were really trying to work around its beauty? They even put some wind indicators here as it 
is being tested in the wind tunnel. Of course, back in the 1940s, nobody even knew what is a wind tunnel all about, but Seb was there to tell us the way. <laughs> and my favorite picture here is when it's going into the sunset. Oh my goodness, talk about classical beauty, yeah? Oh, look at that, it's taking a turn. <laughs> uh huh. <laughs> And we'll just, we'll, ju we'll ju just love the interior, eh? Check the seats, you know? I bet these are the most comfortab comfortable seats in the in the auto industry. Oof, anyways, <laughs> enough of my love for hypercars, you know? <laughs> yeah, back to the animation that we're going to create today, okay? So thank you guys for everything. Thank you for your support once more for all these years, you know? Thank you for your emails that have been, that have really kept me so busy. After all, we, are, we, we have now more than six and a half thousand members at the forum and I really appreciate guy, that guys and really it really takes a, a lot of time off me just to answer your emails and so forth. Thank you for having a part of this, uh, for having been a part of this amazing journey and let's create this tutorial today. And please guys, if you guys have, have a picture of any car that looks better than this from the past, please send me an email. Okay, my email address is hendrinbatadiahoo.com. Okay, you can of course see it at the website. Uh -huh. Please send me a picture of a car that you think is better looking like than this, you know. I doubt that you'll find any. <laughs> but, and for me, this is what I really call an antique, you know, antique. <laughs> yeah, let's get started with our tutorial today. <laughs> Now open up your 3D Max and then we are going to go to File, Reset, mm -hmm. and then we are going to go to the Create panel, Shapes, and then select the text, and then turn on Auto Grid so that it can be in the middle of the text, okay? And then of course we need to enter our text. Now this can be any number of your choice of course, and I, th I think since you've turned 2 years old, I'm going to enter the, the 2. Mm -hmm click into, into the viewport so that we can create the text of course and then we, we are going to go to the modify panel so that we can change the font and I think the font that's going to work better for it is what I call the Calibri not Calibri but uh, instead let's see Kandara Italic yeah just a font that looks a bit out of the ordinary should work okay it's not indeed every day that you turn two years older, <laughs> as a little boy or little girl will tell you that. <laughs> and then we are going to add, we are going to give some depth to it, of course. So we are going to add in the modify panel, we are going to add a bevel modifier. Mm -hmm. Let's scroll down and then let's begin by giving it some height. By the way, let's come here. Right click on the perspective viewport label and, and then select edge faces so that of course we can see for ourselves what we are doing. Mm -hmm. But I think a height of, uh, let's see, 0 0.8, mm -hmm, that should do for the level 1. And then we also want a secondary level of height. Now this height, let's make it 0 0.5, mm -hmm. should just be a little bit of height indeed. And then it also needs some outline. So for the outline, let's enter the minus 0 0.6, like that. So that at the top of the text, of course, you can see it gives us a nice shape to work with. Okay? So that's what the outlining does. Okay? And I think it will look even better when you also give it again a third level of height of again 0 0.5, like that. And an outline again of minus 0 0.6. Okay, it's a bit too thick, so let's give it minus 0 0.8 for the, this outline. Because mm -hmm. you can see what the text object looks like according to that view. And I think we need to reduce its height down a bit. Maybe to 0 0.3, like that. Okay. And now... If we look below the text, we'll realize that it's a bit too flat. So we're going to add a mirror modifier, mm -hmm, like that. Oh, sorry, not morpher. Mirror modifier. Mirror, 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 mirror on the wall. Where are you? There it is. Uh huh. Now we're going to mirror it on the Z axis and make sure it's a copy, like that, by checking the copy option. 
uh -huh, so that of course at this point you realize how what the duplicate of it it has created uh -huh, you can see of course the difference there of what the mirror effect looks like mm -hmm. and then now of course we are going to work on the material but first we need to change the rendering engine and the rendering output so we go to rendering render mm -hmm. first we're going to change it the output size to HDTV because hmm, well that's the format that people use these days make it 128 by 720 mm -hmm. check click on the assign renderer change it from default skyline to mental ray as you'll notice uh, lately at rendertheJeta.com almost all the tutorials in, inside of 3D Max we are only using mental ray renderer that's because of its power to create very beautiful materials and very, very convincing sort of realistic shaders we, that we can use in most of our projects so that's why we are, we are forever using mental ray because it's so powerful and it, of course it's a built-in uh, renderer inside of 3D Max you don't need to pay any extra money for it after that we are going to open our material editor Mm -hmm. to begin to play around with the materials now we're going to select this material slot here and give it to the text mm -hmm. so assign it to the text just rename it to text and now we're going to change the material type from standard to a mental ray texture of course like that uh -huh. let me maximize it just double click on this material here you're going to notice it pops up a bigger version of it so that you can see of course exactly how we are changing the materials now we're going to click on the surface shader where it says none in here click on the surface now we want our text to be a glowing not a glowing but a shiny kind of chromy texture and for that we're going to load a DGS material you can see what it is of course it looks like this chrome texture with shiny areas so double click on it the DGS material mm -hmm. Now we want to, our, our texture to be a bit more in, exciting by, edi, by adding a gradient to it. So click on the diffuse button and then of course we are going to load a gradient map there. Click on the gradient like that. Uh -huh. Already you can see how it's affecting our scene. Click on the display and viewport button so that we can see of course what it looks like on our text. Now the, ma the texturing here depends totally on you. But this is how I like to do it. For the color number one, we are going to give it the color of the sky, which is a light blue, shade like that. Mm -hmm. I like the fact that we can, of course, see for ourselves exactly how it's updating in the, in the viewport. So that's for the first color. For the second shader, hmm, let's give it a forest green texture. Yeah, like that. Okay. And then for color number three, well, let's give it a kind of a yellowish texture, but a washed out yellow, like that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let's go up to the parent and uh, press F9 to preview, or just simply hit, hit the preview render button. Uh -huh, you can see, of course, what how beautiful the text is looking already at this point. Okay. Now we want our text to be a bit more transparent. So we are going to come here and change the transparency of the text to 0 0.55. Uh -huh. You'll notice of course now there is some see-throughness when you click on the checkerboard there so that you can see the transparency option. Uh -huh. You can see of course now the text is a bit see-through. You can see the difference if I turn it off and when we bring it on again by entering 0 0.55 for the transparency value uh -huh. you can see of course what it does. And uh, hmm, we need to reduce a bit the refractions going on inside by changing the index of refraction to 1. Uh -huh, you'll notice how it gets rid of those unwanted edges. You see what the refraction, refraction does? Uh -huh. It makes the edges more harder to see through. But of course, turning it to 1 gets rid of those areas. Okay. Uh -huh. Now let's see again what we've done. F9. Uh -huh. You can see, of course, uh, the beautiful text that we're having at this point that we're going to use inside of uh, After Effects to compose it and to create our animation as the end result. Okay. And now, at this point, here's what we're going to do. We're going to right-click on the text and then collapse everything so that it just becomes one mesh now. Actually, we can always make it an editable poly. And then we're going to add a modifier just to make our text more stylish, okay? Uh, for instance, we want to stretch out the base there.
To do that, we are going to add an FFD 2x2x2 modifier. Click on the control points. And then let's come here to the top view. Uh -huh. Now, with those bottom control points selected, we are simply going to scale them wider, of course, on the X axis, as you can see. You might even want to scale those also like that. Uh -huh. And also upwards like that. Uh -huh. And then right click and then collapse everything so that, of course, now it's one object again. And now we are ready to create our animation. First things first. I think we need to change the length of our animation. So I'm going to change it from 100 frames by clicking on the time configuration button there at the bottom there. Click on it. And then we're going to change the end time to 130 frames like that. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that of course it gives us more frames to work with. And then here's what we're going to do. We are going to turn on auto key for now so that we can begin of course the animation process. And then select the rotation tool. Mm -hmm. Now at this point here, okay, turn on the angle snap toggle like that, so that we get more accurate rotations. And I think at this point we are going to rotate our object here. Sorry. I think we need to work on the inner circle there. No, no, no. This won't work. Okay. At the beginning we want our object to be really rotated. And hence, this is what you're going to do. At frame 0, we're going to rotate it up to 130 degrees. So select the rotation tool. And then come in here. At those, um, as you can see, at the bottom there, you get the X, the Y, and the Z coordinates there to enter our values. Because I'm finding it sort of difficult to rotate uh, the object at this point. I don't know why. Because you notice when you rotate from here. Oh, yeah, we can actually do it like that. Okay? Basically... You, you select the rotation tool and then you have to rotate along this axis here. And then you're going to rotate it, as you can see, downwards up to 130 degrees like that. Uh -huh. You can see how, it, how it's updating the number of degrees at the bottom there on the y-axis. Uh -huh. So basically at this point the object has been rotated up to 130 degrees on the y-axis. And then you're going to move to frame 50. Basically at this point there, click on create keyframe button. Mm -hmm. Then we're going to move to frame 50, and then in here we want it to be rotated on the other the other way around, which means, of course, we want it to be rotated to minus 130 degrees. So we are simply going to enter the value there at the bottom there, minus 130, so that at this point, of course, can be facing the other way. Uh, but if that's the case, you can see the two is not going to read properly. So instead, let's see. Yeah, we're going to rotate it instead to minus, let's see, minus, mm -hmm. yeah, minus 180 or, no, minus 205 degrees, no, 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 minus 190, no, 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 minus 185 degrees, okay, or 45 degrees on the positive axis, we are doing that so that we can have more room to animate some, some, some uh, our animations going on on the, on the inside, at this point, when we play it back, you can see what is happening, of course. Hmm, you see, it's too, a bit too subtle. So, let's go back to the beginning again. I think we need to give it even more degrees to, to be rotated around. So, as you can see, I'm twisting mine even further. So that this point is fitting the other way, like that. We, we really want more animation in the beginning. Not too much. Okay. Ah, that's a bit too much, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, instead, let's see, how does this work for us? Ah, okay, yeah, this is looking much better. <laughs> it really depends on how much spinning you want in the beginning, okay? It all depends on that, really. Let me see, at this point, what do we get? No. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is really up to you, but you can see, of course, I'm adjusting mine just to get enough rotation in the beginning. Yeah, that's looking much better. So as you can see, I've decided, well, for now, if it trades once and then twice before it settles down, that should be fine for me. Okay? 
Now we need a camera already to begin to capture the scene. So let's go to the create panel, select cameras and then we're going to create a free camera. A free camera of course doesn't have a target object so that's why we're creating it. Uh -huh. Besides it's a simple animation so that's why we're creating a simple camera. So let's just come and create it anywhere there in the top viewport. Select the rotation tool because it needs to be facing directly onto the object so we're going to rotate it exactly of course 90 degrees like that so it can be facing the object let's come here to the perspective viewport right click on it and then views camera like that mm -hmm. of course make sure you're working from the beginning let's go to frame 50 uh -huh, and begin to rotate the camera turn off the angle snap toggle at this point mm -hmm. at this point we want to begin to rotate the camera of course so that it can be facing the object properly and then we also want to see what we are we are capturing. So right click and then select show save frame so that we can see of course what will appear in our animation. Mm -hmm. So we can see of course we are adjusting the camera so that it faces the, and the animations pro the animation properly. Mm -hmm. Remember inside here that is where the main animation will be taking place. So that's where we are giving it more room to work with so as you can see we are simply positioning the camera at this point hoping to get of course a better view of things I'm just calculating it eh, to see where, where, whether we have enough space for animation that will come through. Okay, and then let's go to the beginning. Uh -huh. You'll notice Redmax has given us a, a keyframe there in the beginning. Mm -hmm. I think what we need to do in the beginning is move the camera to the side so that at the beginning we don't see the text. So simply move the camera like that, as you can see on the x-axis, so that of course the, be the scene begins with no text at all, and then as we play animation, it comes through. Uh, maybe we've done it incorrectly. Let's see. I'm going to select the keyframe there, delete it. Mm -hmm. So that now, okay, I'm going to move the text to the side as you can see and then play. Okay. I think also, just make it a bit more dynamic, yeah? This really depends on you, on which kind of animation you want. I'm simply going to undo what I did now. Because I think what we had in the beginning with the text starting like that is not so bad after all. Okay. In fact, we might want to rotate the text in the beginning, the camera in the beginning like that, so that it's looking at one side in the beginning. Yeah, it's looking good. Okay. Okay. Now, when the text is appearing like that, now we need to we are going to slowly tilt it around, giving time for our viewers, of course, to analyze and see what the text is all about. To do that, first we are going to move to frame hundred like that, mm -hmm. and then we are going to select our text. Mm -hmm. Turn on the angle snap toggle. Now, during that time, now we are going to rotate the text, of course, so that we flatten it like that. Uh huh. And also at this point, I think the camera better be looking at the proper way. So we're going to, let's see, rotate the camera a bit, bring it down. We are really, at this point, we are really trying to give our audience time to analyze what the text is all about. So that's why we are tilting things. Of course, as you can see, it can become quite cumbersome when rotating the camera at this point. But, of course, it's not impossible. <laughs> yeah, just position the camera so that, of course, our audience will get the time now to see how our, our text settles down. 
let's see what we have now the text comes it settles down no 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 it's floating on the air that's not good let's go to frame 100 again okay at this point it's not floating anymore mm -hmm. select the text you'll notice uh -huh, it settles down select the okay at this point now at frame 130 the text needs to rotate again out of its way so we're going to rotate it again out of the way like that let's just see what we did there it settles and then rotates out of the way okay so we're going to select our camera mm -hmm. let's reach frame 100 and create a keyframe there mm -hmm. and then let's go to frame 120 for that matter and then in here we don't want it to be looking at the text anymore so we're going to move it to the side like that okay so that at the end here the text settles and then of course it rotates out of the way okay so let's play animation again so the text comes it settles and then it rotates out of the way okay uh -huh. you see of course the animation we've created sort of simple camera animation and keyframing of course now after you've made sure that your camera animation is qu is quite good we are now going to render our scene now something very important about rendering when you're working with 3d i always advise to render not in a movie format like avi or quicktime or windows media format because if your computer sh decides to shut down or if you have a power interruption trust me you are going to lose all your rendering work so instead what i always prefer to do is to render in an image sequence so that we can compose it easily instead of after effect and of course even if the computer shuts down we can always resume from the last frame that it rendered let me show you what i mean of course to do that we go to, we go to rendering render first of course you want to change it to, to the time output to active time segment of 0 to 130 frames uh -huh. of course you're rendering hdtv 128 by 720 uh -huh. And then we come here to the rendering output, and then we're going to click on files. Uh huh. And then you can save it anywhere you want. Let's call it uh, text animation. Uh huh. And then in here, we're going to give the name to our file. It's going to be called text animation. And now, because this needs to be rendered, rendered on a black background. We need to change the we need to make sure that we can keep an alpha channel so that we can of course use its transparency instead of after effects so here's what we're going to do we're going to save the sa save as type change it to png or targa sequence because both they can both keep uh the they can both keep the alpha channel so that we can use the transparency in, in after effects and of course, as I warned you, if you use a QuickTime file or AVI, trust me, if the computer decides to shut down, you'll be in big trouble. <laughs> I've learned it from experience. So click on the PNG image file mm -hmm, and then hit on save. Uh -huh. Of course, you'll notice it's asking you now to keep the alpha channel. Of course, make sure it's checked on. Hit OK. Mm -hmm. Now, before we go actually ahead, just press F9 so that we can preview of course what we've done ah sorry sorry open up the rendering change this one first to single i'm going to uncheck that option for now we just want to see what the output looks like uh -huh, you can see of course what, it lo what it's looking like and unfortunately it looks a bit too darkened out the the material is a bit too dark and too dull so we're going to go to rendering in, uh, environment and then we're going to change the global lighting level to 2 so that of course our materials will look a bit brighter and then the ambient color instead of it being completely dark change it to a, a, gray, a dark gray color and then press F9 uh, you'll notice of course now the textures of course are a bit brighter okay now at this point we can then go ahead open up the rendering change the time output back to active time segments and of course check the save file option and then hit render yes uh -huh. and then of course it's going to begin to create the rendering sequence for us be patient with it it might take longer than 
you might think but just be patient with it okay because it's rendering with mental ray of course in the beginning nothing is appearing because our text is still appearing somewhere there and of course uh -huh, now the text begins to appear into the view okay so i'm going to pause the tutorial and then see you when the rendering is complete in fact guess what you don't actually need to wait all along because 3d max has the ability to launch another copy of itself while you can wait for the rendering to complete so here's what we do instead because we need to create our strokes and we don't want to waste any time you know so we go to start programs and then yeah launch your 3d max so that of course while this one is rendering uh -huh, we can still be working on the strokes of course to save ourselves time so that when when this one is done rendering we can simply continue the work okay i really like that that power of being able to do one thing while something else is taking place you know truly multitasking <laughs> Uh -huh. Now, as, as you're about to find out, creating the stroke in 3D Max is in fact deceptively simple. Now, you may be wondering, Henry, why aren't we creating the, the stroke right from inside of After Effects? Well, we are going to do it in 3D Max because uh, of the way in, way in which uh, 3D Max enables us to create the object with a particular material that we can apply to it. And also, this stroke will have some kind of a depth to it, okay? And oh my goodness, I also love just doing these kinds of abstract works because it's not every once in a while that I always do that. Again, the, remember the trick is to first go to File, Reset. Uh huh. Now, the stroke we're going to create in the front viewport. So let's go to it. Click on the shapes and then we're going to create a line. And again, click on Auto Grade. Mm -hmm. And then in here, we're going to be a bit crazy. So here's how crazy we're going to be create a stroke as you can see S start by clicking the points there by the way we're creating these folds because the folds are responsible for nicely uh, 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 displaying our material that's why I'm creating those folds as you can see so just follow along please mm -hmm. around here we want it to bend a bit because there will be a gradient there uh -huh. before it goes in again okay when you're done you just simply right click uh-huh so that we can be done with the design of course you can see what a weird design i've ended up with at this point select the moving tool and then we're going to move it to zero units on all axes like that mm -hmm. i think we need to pull this a bit more up mm -hmm. remember you can design any stroke you want i just prefer this one because of the end result that it can give us okay now once you've created a stroke of course it's flat we want to change the color from purple to maybe a light blue uh -huh. now at this point we are going to add an extrude modifier what is it extrude mm -hmm. change the extrude amount at this point to let's say two no 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 600 hmm. sorry 600 like that okay i'm going to press we're going to right click on the left viewport label and then select smooth plus highlights uh-huh you can see of course what it's looking like at this point and clearly it needs more extrusion so change the extrude amount by entering the let's say 6000 mm -hmm. so that you can see of course it begins to stretch out more and also select the scaling tool and just scale it a bit down like that let's come here at the left viewport and then select edge faces so you can see of course the details going on there mm -hmm. And also, I think we need to ch give it some segments. So change the number of segments to 90, like that, so that it can already subdivide the object for us. And now, go to rendering because we already we already we need to decide on what the output should be like. So we go to rendering, render, and then the most important thing is to change the output size to HDTV, mm -hmm, like that. And then we come to the left viewport and then select uh, show save frame. We are using the left viewport because this is the viewport from which we'll be rendering, of course. Mm -hmm. Then select the scaling tool still and just scale it down a bit as you can see to make it a bit thinner, of course. And then we need to create some distortions with our object. Actually, let's first scale it down a bit more. Mm -hmm. Open up the material editor and just give it this material here. Make it two-sided. And now this needs to be a gradient material so 
we're going to click on the diffuse map and of course load a gradient map there like that okay I'm going to come here right click on the viewport and then uncheck edge faces uh -huh, you can see what's going on and then of course make sure you can see the gradient in the viewport by clicking on the checker box there uh -huh, you can see how it updates already of course you can notice the gradient starts a bit brighter until of course was the end it ends up being darker I think the grid is a bit distracting so right click on the left viewport and then uncheck show grid uh -huh, you can see of course what I mean by that that's the power of the gradient inside of 3d max and then the gradient hmm, unfortunately we want it to be a bit more uniform so we are going to change the rotation angle of the gradient on the W axis change the rotation to minus 90 degrees like that uh-huh of course you can see now the bottom is a bit brighter and the top is a bit darker okay if you press F9 to preview this or click on the render preview there uh-huh you can see of course what I mean the bottom of the green is a bit brighter and the top is a bit darker that was at, uh, achieved by changing the W angle axis to minus 90 degrees in other words we rotated the material to minus 90 degrees and also another thing the scene is a bit too dark we need to lighten it up by going to rendering environment and then we're going to change the ambient color from a dark color to a bit of a light gray color as you can see mm -hmm. and then just press F9 again to preview uh -huh, of course you can see now the scene is a bit brighter